Merkova from Clive Barker's Hellraiser comic series is quite a unique Cenobite. Why? Well, what sets her apart in the lore is her deep, caring relationship with Pinhead the Hell Priest and Leviathan's main man, or Cenobite for that matter. This emotional side of her character separates her from the typically emotionless and pain-pleasure-obsessed world of Cenobites. In the comic, she led a gash of Cenobites called the Lucky Six, who were tasked with fighting the forces of Leviathan's sister, Mordemame. So in this video, we will explore Merkova's rather obscure story and see just how deep and complex her character was. Let's begin, shall we? Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. The Harrowing, a prelude. To fully understand Merkova's role and journey in the Hellraiser universe, it is important that we rewind a little and explore the event called the Harrowing, which was the summoning of six harrowers by Leviathan's sister, Morde Mame, who, unlike Leviathan, was a force of good. In Joplin, Missouri, Morde Mame was imprisoned for generations inside an egg-shaped tomb by her brother Leviathan. But how could she escape without any help? To escalate her freedom, she recruited seven individuals, known as her harrowers, to challenge Leviathan and his demonic Cenobites. And how did she do that? Well, it's almost ingenious as well as silly. Morde Mami's salvation came in the unexpected form of maggots, who were munching on her body but were also consuming her powers and life force. Morde Mame allowed these insects to consume her flesh, which allowed the maggots to grow wings, and soon enough, she sent them out to find her harrowers. Meanwhile, several miles above, the tomb's guardian, Bunny Benedict, is jolted awake by an earthquake initiated by Morde Mame. Bunny Benedict actually ran the egg museum called the Legs Benedict's Egg Museum, under which Morte Mame was present. So anyway, this jolt from within cracks open the earth, releasing the goddess-infused insects insects from their environment. Oblivious to their importance, Bunny felt a sudden urge to get ready for unforeseen visitors and began tidying up the museum, and the insects flew out of the museum. In New York City, tattoo artist Ron Wingwood gets an unexpected surprise. While working, he's stung by one of Morde Mame's flies. This sting plants a telepathic message from the goddess, urging him to head to Missouri. Acting under her influence, Ron tattoos Joplin, Missouri on his current cousin customer, then abruptly leaves the shop on his motorcycle, with the confused customer hot on his heels. Over in Ohio State Penitentiary, we find Vera Wishak on death row. During her last rites, a priest tries to save her soul, but Vera's not having it. Then fate intervenes. One of Morde Mame's flies lands in the priest's office, and after he swallows it, he's possessed by the goddess. He instructs Vera to go to Joplin before dying. Seizing the opportunity, Vera escapes in the priest's Clothes. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, Missouri, Winston Gage, an animal shelter worker, stumbles upon a kitten that miraculously avoided euthanasia. As he's saving the kitten, it ingests one of Morte Mame's flies. Later, while tossing out the trash, Winston finds the kitten again, this time with a tag stating, My name is Zinc, Joplin City License. It's clear to Winston, he's meant to return this kitten to Joplin, so he sets off in his Volkswagen bug, kitten in tow. In Tennessee, twin sisters Lavinia and Lucinda Clare, wealthy Brits on a US tour, find themselves bored at Graceland. During a picnic, while wondering their next destination, a twist of fate occurs. A fly from Morde Mame lands on their map, and Lucinda, unthinking, swats it. The dead fly sticks to Joplin, Missouri on the map, sparking the twins' interest. It seems Joplin is their next stop. Meanwhile, in a Chicago movie house, ex-professor Dublin Morse is trying to make his mundane job as a projectionist more interesting with a hit of acid. A fly from the goddess lands on the projector lens. Morse, seeing the fly as a being with a shared head, removes it. The insect, in a hallucinatory conversation, tells him to head to Joplin, Missouri, and to have an egg. Finally, in Wichita, Kansas, we meet Marty Sevenbird, working high above on a power line, battling his fear of heights. 
The last of Morty Mommy's flies, trapped in a spider web, meets its end as spider food. Marty, once he reaches the top, witnesses an extraordinary sight. The spider has woven Joplin M.O. into its web. The summoned individuals converge at Legs Benedict's Egg Museum in Joplin, where Bunny Benedict, the guide, welcomes them. Bunny explains that the museum, built around a giant egg-shaped monument, is a family legacy tied to a pact with the Indians. During her tour, an earthquake suddenly rips open the ground, revealing a hidden stairwell. Zink, the kitten, dashes into the darkness, prompting the group, with lanterns in hand, to follow. While Bunny, injured in the quake, stays above, the group descend. They encounter a granite rock concealing a chamber door. Together, they push aside the rock to uncover what lies beyond. Inside, they find a grim scene. The bodies of six people, long deceased, surrounding the prison of Morte Mami. A cryptic message on the seal, Sex Liberabit Si Enigma Explicata Erita, which translates to Six Shall Release If the Puzzle Is Solved. It leads them to recite Latin phrases in front of the seal, which grants them entry into six separate chambers, and the room begins to spin. At this moment, Morte Mami herself appears. She declares them as her harrowers, chosen warriors against the Cenobites, demonic beings spawned by her brother Leviathan. She reveals the tragic fate of the previous harrowers, who fell victim to Leviathan's deceit. Each member of the group is then endowed with a weapon infused with her life force, and they take on their new roles as champions against evil. And now, let's meet Merkova. Murkova and her lucky six. In the labyrinth, Leviathan senses the challenges posed by Morte Mame's new harrowers in Joplin and summons the General, the Cenobite military leader. The General, in turn, assembles a squad called the Lucky Six, hand-picked Cenobite warriors tasked with thwarting the harrowers and keeping Morte Mame confined. This group, selected in response to the harrowers solving the puzzle chamber, was fated to confront and attempt to annihilate the harrowers and their chaotic goddess Morte Mame. The members of the Lucky Six included Murkova, the star of our show and the squad's leader, who shares a romantic history with Pinhead. As we already know, she has a skeletal horse muzzle for a face, horse-like legs, and horse hair draping from her arm. Then we have Cowboy, who, true to his name, resembles a cowboy but is wrapped in barbed wire. Halo Blades sports a halo embedded in his skull, but unlike others, his halo is made of thick, curved ray Razors. Like most Cenobites, he wears black leather. Cattle Skull appears aged, with a giant cattle skull embedded in his stomach its horns piercing up through his body and neck, while saw blades adorn his arm. Fulgar had hooks dug into her skull and a Hannibal Lecter-like mask screwed onto her face. She wears a spiked collar and a revealing leather outfit, with spikes protruding from her forearms and a spiked circle embedded in her stomach, which gives her a more boxy shape. Turpus, another older Cenobite, has extended arm bones stretching his skin and a reattached top of his skull. Spikes protrude from his stomach, and human heads are attached around his waist. The fight at the Egg Museum began as the Lucky Six, led by Murkova, arrived to find Morte Mami already freed by the harrowers. Murkova grabs Zink, the harrower's pet cat, and threatens its life. In fact, Our Lady wants to make bracelets out of the poor cat's intestines. I guess only a Cenobite could say such things. However, Winston Gage, who had the ability to see through Zink's eyes, turns the tables by teleporting and swapping places with Zing. He catches her off guard. Winston was wielding a divine axe, courtesy of Morde Mame, which he used to sever both of Murkova's arms. So basically, the fight had not even begun, and Murkova lost both her arms. Clearly, things were not looking good for Pinhead's darling. As the rest of the harrowers rush to join the fray, a battle breaks out. During this chaotic confrontation between the forces of good and evil, Morde Mame brought forth a creature named Ovid, who was tasked with bolstering the harrowers' courage. Ovid, who is quite notably flatulent, manages to distract the Cenobites, excluding Murkova. Seizing the opportunity, twin harrowers Lucinda and Lavinia use their powers of duplication and divine lasso to tie up the distracted Cenobite. In the midst of confusion and disarray, the harrowers efficiently dismember five of the Cenobites. This leaves Murkova, who is already disarmed, isolated, and outnumbered in the battle. In the heat of battle, Murkova suffered a serious 
previously fatal blow. So what happened really? Well, in the beginning, Morde Mame had told the Harrowers that the Cenobites could not really be killed and the only way to bring them down was through dismembering them. Murkova had been partially dismembered, but I believe an enchanted weapon with the life force of Leviathan's sister was also enough to do the trick. So Marty Sevenbirds, whom we met earlier as another one of the Harrowers, stabbed her with his divine longsword, mortally wounding her. Faced with defeat and unwilling to surrender, Murkova makes a final move by abducting Bunny Benedict and escaping back to Hell. In Hell, Pinhead discovers Murkova when she is about to die. Seeing her in pain, or whatever it is that Cenobites feel while dying, he removes Marty's sword, which ultimately leads to her death. In a moment of grief, Pinhead vows vengeance against the Harrowers for Murkova's death, promising that they will pay with their souls. Furthermore, he now has an enchanted weapon against the Harrowers, which has slightly evened the odds. In the aftermath, Pinhead assumes the task of torturing Bunny Benedict in Hell, while the Harrowers vow to infiltrate Hell and get back Bunny Benedict. Appearance In terms of appearance, Murkova has quite distinct and unsettling features. She has a skeletal horse snout stitched onto her face, replacing what would be her human features. Additionally, the lower part of her legs seem to have been replaced with that of a horse, which further pronounces her eerie and hybrid appearance. Additionally, what appears to be horse hair can be found on her arms and forms a belt around her waist. Contrary to the usual baldness of most Cenobites, Murkova sports a mohawk that cascades down her back, which sets her apart even within her own kind. Her attire, while still the usual leather bondage kind worn by Cenobites, is more revealing than the norm. Marvelous Verdict Cenobites are typically known for their singular dedication to the dual extremes of pain and pleasure, and it's frankly strange for them to fall in love and feel emotions. So, the notion of Pinhead and Murkova finding love is more of an anomaly to me that could very well be termed as both unorthodox and bizarre within this universe's framework. Their existence is defined by a detachment from typical human emotion and an immersion in the exploration of sensory extreme, and that's it. It, period. Nothing more, nothing less. Love, in its conventional understanding, involves empathy, connection, and often a form of mutual care and respect. Concepts that are fundamentally alien to the Cenobites' ethos, to the Cenobites' ethos, or so I'd like to believe. But hey, that's just me. Let me know what you think about this whole ordeal of Pinhead and Murkova doing it under the sheets, presumably hoping to make baby Cenobites.